Well, hello, hello, hello. It's uh, it's raining. It must be summer in England, Hampshire. Fantastic. Now, I just came out to do a quick run, which is part of my fitness channel, Free To Be Positive. Are you using the fact that Stranger Things will no doubt be a strong search term at the moment, and therefore people might well land on this video in some desperate attempt to, to, to promote your own CD channel? Damn right. But being serious for a second. I was being serious. Season 3 of Stranger Things was released a couple of days ago, July the 4th, in fact, through Netflix, of which I have a subscription. It's one of those subscriptions where you can only watch it on one TV at a time, so don't even bother asking for my sign-in information, because you'll fail. And they did the same as they did last year, at least I think they did for season two, where they released the entire season all in one go, which is uh, which is kind of cool in a way. So I was able to, I basically binged the entire season three over the past couple of days. Obviously, if you're not a fan of Stranger Things or you haven't watched it, then, you know, why are you here? For those of you who are fans and haven't got around to watching all of season three yet, this will contain spoilers, but I'll put them towards the back half of the video. Cut the fudge. Let's review. Season one, I absolutely loved. I thought it was absolutely amazing. It was like nothing we'd seen before. A complete nostalgia trip way back to the 80s, which was uh, when I was growing up. So a lot of the references and um, it was just very endearing for me. I really enjoyed that season. It was absolutely fantastic. The opening credits, both visually and sonically, the soundtrack was just absolutely awesome. It had me engrossed right from the beginning. It's still one of those few programs where I'll watch the title sequence because I just love it. It, did, it just immediately brings me back to my childhood. So season one, I absolutely loved. Season two, not so much. It was still good, but it did feel a little bloated. I felt they could have maybe done a couple of less episodes. There was the one where Elle ended up going, well, I can't remember where, was it Chicago maybe? I can't remember where it was she went, but she ended up with a gang. And it was just a shit episode, wasn't it? I mean, it was it was not a good one. But it, it did feel a bit bloated that season. But ultimately, it wasn't a bad one. I was questioning at the end of it, because it clearly, yet again, set up for another season. But I was kind of curious as to where it was going to go, because the gate had been closed. The gate had been sealed at the end of season two. And it kind of felt like there was nowhere left to go. How are you going to do it? What, they, they come back again. So how was it going to go in season three? And was I going to enjoy it? Well, let's get into season three and have a look. First thing I'd like to talk about is the production value and the effects. Absolutely outstanding. The set pieces they put together are absolutely amazing. A lot of this is set around a mall, which has just been opened up in the town. Town of Hawkins, I believe. And they did such a great job of putting this together. You, you totally believe the sets. Absolutely fantastic. So much attention to detail has been put into even just the packaging of, like, uh, you know, sweets that they're eating or popcorn or Burger King is... is featured heavily in it absolutely fantastic one of the creatures that returns to the show is the mind flayer is it the mind flayer the mind flayer i didn't look at my notes and the effects on this creature is absolutely fantastic definitely on par with most hollywood films that you're going to see absolutely fantastic really amazing don't know how many more times i can say it's good in a different way one thing that i did notice very highly highly is that one thing i noticed was that there was a lot more comedy in this season. But it wasn't in a bad way. It did kind of have that real 80s feel to a lot of the writing and it, just going a bit over the top, maybe you know, going a bit too far at times. But it really worked. I really did find a lot of the stuff in here really genuinely funny. It really felt like the writers... The Duffer Brothers, I believe. It really felt as though they were actually having a really good time with this season. It kind of it just felt like they were just like, whatever. Whatever they felt, whatever they wanted to do, they just went ahead and did. I think it really worked. I really I really did enjoy what they did with that. I thought it was great. On top of that, you had some truly horrific moments in this season as well. Some of the scenes in it were actually quite... Ooh, 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 ooh. But then again, was there anything quite as horrific as Barbara? Justice for Barb. I do hope her name was Barbara, because if not, I've just wasted a lot of time explaining. The Mind Flayer from season two is back. And he's up to all sorts of rhubarb, he really is. Along with the Mind Flayer, we get the Flayed. These are the people that he actually manages to take over, much like he did with Will in season two. He, uh, it, I suppose, infects, almost like a zombie, like a parasite. He infects uh, people in the town and uh, they become part of his team. Team? One of the other villains in the piece is that classic 80s enemy. The Russians. Yes, the Russians are back, and they're not very nice. In this, I mean, I have no problem with Russians. I don't know any Russians, but I'm sure they're 
lovely, lovely people. Who, much like the American government in the previous seasons, were the ones who were trying to get through to the upside down this in this uh, season. Billy is also back, the villain of the second season, and he has much more of a prominent role in this season. And I have to say, he does a really good job. I wasn't keen of him at all in season two, but um, he has much more of a wider role. He gets to expand his acting uh, a little more, and I genuinely. I genuinely enjoyed his performance in this. I thought he was really good in this season. While we're on the subject of performances, of course, we've got the child actors who, to be fair, seem to be getting better every single year. Millie Bob Brown, who plays Eleven, I thought she did great in season one because her character was somewhat uh, wooden, shall we say. Season two, I wasn't such a fan of her. I don't know, she didn't see, it didn't seem like her range was being tested that much. I wasn't overly keen on her acting in season two. But I really think she, she did decent in season three. She does really seem to be growing as an actress. And um, yeah, there were a few moments where she, there were definitely some more emotional scenes for her in this season. And uh, I think she did a solid job. In fairness, all the acting was top notch. I really enjoyed the acting. The characters are just so great. I did mention earlier how I wasn't sure how they go from season two to season three. Is it just going to be rehashing what's already been done before? To an extent, yeah. But it's the characters that really bring you back to the show. You really do enjoy spending time with these characters. It really just works. And uh, like I said, the set pieces, the whole nostalgia trip. It's just, it's just so well done. While we're on the subject of the characters, there are some really great double acts throughout this season that work so well. One of which is Jim Hopper and Joyce Byers. David Harbour and the Winode. But being Winode a rider. They spend a lot of this season bouncing off one another as this really great double act, and it works so well. They really, really do work so well together. Another great double act is Steve and a new character, Robin, played by Maya Hawke, who has been introduced into the team and she does a fantastic job. She really is a worthwhile addition to the show and their chemistry with each other throughout this is awesome. They really do work so well together. It's absolutely fantastic. And also Dustin, I think it's Dustin. Is he the one with the teeth? You know, his performances throughout this are great as well. And he has uh, he has a bit he has a bit of time as well with Steve as well, where they get together and they kind of have that double act chemistry as they did in season two. Works really well together. Another character worth pointing out is Erica Sinclair, and she plays the younger sister of Lucas. And she's just she steals the scene whenever she's in a scene. She does absolutely great. She's really, she's really funny. Does so well. It's really great. I just really enjoyed her, her performances in this. And another character that I completely forgot to mention as well. We got there's a Russian scientist. Oh, I can't remember his name now. Considering how little he's in it, he's actually a really good character. You actually do warm to him quite a lot. And he pairs up with the bearded guy who was in the season two as well. The writer guy, the guy who was exposing. I really should have written this stuff down. I got a phone here. I could check it, but effort and another fantastic character but there was one character a russian guy the main russian villain who was a complete and obvious nod towards arnold schwarzenegger in the terminator it was a complete rip-off of that character but it it worked it just really worked there's so much as i don't know i'd really be interested to see what younger people think of this season because uh, the nostalgia of this just worked for me so well. I just loved it. Now we're going into spoiler territory. Mm. I'm going to skip to episode eight, the final episode of this season. There will be heavy spoiler warnings for this one. If you don't want to know, fair enough, click away. If you do want to know, please stick around and make sure you leave a comment as well because I want to know what your theories are on this as well. So we got all the stuff going on with the mind flare, blah, blah, blah. It's, it, it is kind of similar to the previous seasons. It ends with the final battle and our troop come through victorious but there were a few things that happened along the way billy i mentioned him earlier on his character he does get some redemption there's a point earlier on in this season where l she does all that mind stuff you know what i mean where she just wanders about a bit and spies on people and like, oh there you are she connects with billy we see a bit into his past we see this really wonderful moment of him and his mother on the beach this is when he's very young and he's having a great time and then suddenly his father's involved and his dad's obviously a very abusive, I don't know if he was an alcoholic, but a very physically abusive guy, kicks the crap out of him and his mother. And we kind of learn a bit of the backstory of Billy and why he is an asshole, basically, that abusive cycle. Towards the end of this episode, he makes a sacrifice. He sacrifices himself 
to save Eleven. We get that really cool redemption for him. He's been an asshole, but he was a, he was a good guy. You know, that whole nurture or nature sort of style thing. It does seem like it was very much a nurture thing. He was a decent guy to start out with. He was a good kid. He had a bad lot in life and he ended up becoming an asshole. But he made up for it in the end. That really kind of made his character worthwhile because I wasn't sure what his character was about or what he was really doing in season two, to be quite honest with you. But yeah, it really, it really worked. I was, I was quite happy with that. How many more times can I say this? And there was also a couple of other things. Jim Hopper. I've seen a few people say they weren't very happy with his his character throughout this. I can see why. He's kind of definitely changed from the first couple of seasons. He definitely he seems softer in many ways and more comedic. But he's also the dad now. He's playing the dad character. And there's a few relationships that are cultivated throughout this involving Jim. One of them is with Winona Ryder's character, Joyce. There's an obvious sexual tension between the two of them. And the other is between him and Eleven, who is now his adopted daughter, essentially. He's trying to look after her. He's trying his best to look out for her and make sure that uh, Mike, who she's dating now, you know you know how it is with younger people. You want to stay away, you know. <laughs> but in doing so, he kind of becomes, I guess, like the interfering parent. He has her best interests at heart, but of course she wants to be free to do her own thing. And so they kind of end up falling out through a bit of it. But major spoiler... Jim Hopper supposedly, supposedly dies in this final episode. There's a very, very touching moment. Basically, they're trying to close a gate. And after a showdown with the Russian Terminator guy, Jim can see that he's trapped by the electromagnetic device. And on the other side, we have Winona's character, Joyce, who is there with the keys to turn the gate off. But he can't get out. And we know what once this gets turned off, it's going to explode. It's going to... It's not going to be cool. So he's going to die. And he just gives her this look that says, go on, do it. I know you need to do it. And there's just a moment between the two of them, tears in her eyes and this obvious love for each other. And it was really well done. It was just so fantastically done. Shortly after this, Joyce gives a letter to Eleven that uh, Jim had written. This was a conversation that he was supposed to have with her that he never got around to having with her. But he's trying to explain to her basically why he's trying to keep her protected from Mike and just trying to keep her safe. But at the same time, he realises that she's got a life of her own and at some point she's going to have to fly the nest and she's going to have to have all these experiences and be her own person and learn the hard way, like so many of us do, get hurt. There's just a really touching moment where she's reading this letter and we've got this voiceover from Jim as it's going on. And it just works really well. It's a really touching moment. I just thought it was, there was a lot of good stuff actually in the final episode. It really was great. I really did enjoy it. And here we get to the crux of what I want to get to. Took you long enough. There is a post credit scene a la Avengers. And in this scene, we are now over in Russia and we are in another facility because, as was mentioned earlier on, the Russians were trying to open up gates in multiple parts of the world. The reason they had to do it in Hawkins was because the gate had previously been opened and therefore it was the most vulnerable, the most likely for them to get through. And we are in this facility, a prison, it looks like. And these two Russian guards approach the cells and they're about to open one, but one guard stops the other and says, no, not the American. So who is this? We don't know. But anyway, they go to the next cell and they drag out a Russian prisoner and they drag him all the way downstairs and they put him in this cell. He seems to know what's going to happen as well. He's begging for his life. He knows this is not good. And as we get in there, there's a demagogue. Demagogue? Demadog. One of the ones from season two, you know, the dog-like ones. And it basically kills him. And that's the end of the season. But it does seem to be setting us up for season four because something's obviously going on in Russia. The Russians have been doing something all along. So there's definitely going to be a season four. But who was the American that they were told not to? to touch. One of the popular theories is that it is Jim Hopper because if you actually look at the scene where the uh, where the key, the electromagnetic machine gets turned off just before it explodes, we actually get a very short uh, sequence of the actual machine itself and Jim Hopper is nowhere to be seen. It's implied that he's dead. It's certainly that's the way everyone is playing it, but you don't see him die. You never actually see him die and there's no evidence of a body or anything like that. Not only is there no evidence of a body, but there's absolutely, but there's actually the absence of a body by the machine before it explodes. If you've got your theories on that one, make sure you let me know. One theory I have heard as well is, I can't remember the guy's name, but uh, Matthew Modine played him. Uh, Pops, the guy who played the David Cronenberg-esque 
character in season one. I think he got... Did he get killed in season one or season two? I think it was said in season two that he wasn't actually killed. They were fairly sure that he didn't actually die. He was, he was last seen being dragged off by one of those dogs. The demo dogs. There was also another theory that possibly it was him. I don't know. I don't know how I'd feel about it being Jim Hopper because they did kind of... The, the ending was very touching, but... Uh, He's definitely a good character and he'd be interested to see him back in season four. But anyway, that's my take on season three. Great season, really, really enjoyed this one. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Eight episodes, didn't feel too overbearing. Started off a little slow, but by the time we got to sort of episode three, four, it really boosted off and it was, it was just great. I really, really enjoyed it, I highly recommend it. If you have watched it and you have watched this far, then leave me your theories as well. Put a comment down below as to what you think's going on and what we can expect from season four, because, uh, yeah, was, God. I really have just winged this one as I'm waiting to go out for my run, which I'm going to do for my second channel for you to be positive. If you know, I mean, if you have, if you have, to be fair to me, if you have watched it this far, then you should probably go and check that out. So I'm going to leave it there because I've clearly not thought any of this through, and this has been, a, it's, it's not been a very good video, has it? Let's be honest.